to study in after school. Totally. Sometimes we even have lessons and consultation with teachers here. Wow, that's nice. It's so spacious and there are even couches here. I look forward to studying here with my friends after school. Yep, there's a wide range of books of different genres in this library. Besides books, we have newspapers and magazines. Welcome to the ASC cabin. ASC stands for After School Engagement. Here, students can come and take a break from studying to play games and bond with each other. There are workshops conducted here from time to time for the students to learn new skills. Hey, there's Jason. Jason, let's go see so what. Welcome to our AES soccer field. Do you know, the under-15 national football team actually trains on this very field each week? Yes, because of our field, we have enjoyed many activities here as a school. Do you remember last year? We had water soccer and the Assumptionites challenge that ended off with a slide down the inflatable castle. Yeah, I had so much fun with my classmates splashing around. Remember when our teacher joined us in the Assumptionites challenge as well? Great bonding time with them too. And of course, besides the school activities, our soccer and softball CCA sessions are also conducted here. We also offer judo as a CCA. And we even have a special room called the dojo for the judokas to train in. It was a very warm welcome. <laughs> 
Our training may be tough, but that's what makes us judo cup holders more stronger. I appreciate how we would cheer one another up when some parts of the training seem difficult. That often gives me the motivation to continue pushing on. So let's take a look at how we train. Let's go, Chunzi! Let me show you another relaxing spot around school. He's in the counseling room. Hi, Mr. Chan! Oh, hello there. Where are you up to? We're currently bringing our new friend around the school. Oh, hi! hi. If you, need, if you know someone who is going through a rough patch and need a receiving gear, feel free to drop by my office. Mr. Chen is our school counselor. In AES, we have two school counselors, an allied educator for learning and behavioral support, and a student welfare officer. All of them are very approachable. We are really fortunate to have Mr. Chen in our school. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, feel free to drop by if you want to. Okay, I'm 
lost for me, but I'll get there, I hope. Okay, what about you? Uh, my favorite content is D&D because you know, it's kind of like the mix of fun and fun stuff. So it's like a very hands-on activity, so I'm very angry and I feel like I learn more and yeah, I can do my stuff. For D&D, we're always kind of helping each other out, trying to improve on each other's like visual design. Okay, I'm trying to help D&D. What does it all Because you know, the book is a mostly hands-on experience. The most hands-on is that during the exam, you have to also cook the food that you have to do with the engineering. My favorite subject is... This is so funny. What is it? It's so funny. All right, good morning, everyone. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Okay, welcome to Assumption English School's virtual open house. I'm Dennis. I'm the year head for lower secondary. And we will be starting very, very shortly. Uh, before we begin, here's a schedule for today's session. So take a look. All right, so we will have our principal addressing us later. And we will also have a live Q&A segment with our school leaders, our key personnel. Okay, we also invited some alumni, current students, and parent volunteers to join us. And we should end at about 12 o'clock. So if you take a look, okay, we have a QR code at the right side of the screen. So you can scan the QR code to answer the question. Or maybe to make it even easier, okay, just under the video descriptions of the YouTube, okay, you just click. There's a link there that directs you to the same site for you to ask your live questions. All right. So maybe I'll just give you a bit of time to scan the QR code. If you have any questions along the way, all right, just feel free to ask them uh, anytime on the, uh, through the form. Okay, we will try to address as many questions as we can. Uh, if not, we will also try to get back to you at the end of the session if you are not able to answer all your questions. All right. Okay, so what we will do now is I shall now pass the time to our school principal, Mr. Benjamin Kwok. He will share a little bit more with you about our school. Mr. Kwok, please. Hi, good morning, uh, parents and students. Uh, a warm welcome to Assumption English School. Uh, actually, at this point in time, I'm not in school. I'm having a meeting uh, outside of school. In fact, I'm in another school. So they were kind enough to give me a bit of a space for me to do this uh, live uh, talk uh, with all of you. So uh, uh, this morning, uh, together with me, I have my key personnel, uh, Mr. Dennis Wang, uh, Miss City, uh, Miss Yu Kui Mei, and Mr. Desmond Wong. And also for the PSG, uh, I understand that there's a Miss Melissa Go and Miss Aruna who will be joining us later on as well. And of course, our alumni students are Dania and Arena and Francine. And later on, together with me, will be my vice principal, Ms. Wong. Uh, together, we will uh, answer some of your queries. So anyway, a uh, warm welcome to Assumption English. All right. Next slide. So uh, Assumption English is the only co-ed uh, Catholic secondary school in the West. Most of the uh, Catholic schools, uh, uh, they are either all boys or all girls, but we are the only one in the West that is co-ed. Now, you may be wondering why uh, a mission school, a Catholic mission school? Uh, of course, mission schools, there are many forms. Uh, ours is a Catholic. There are others who are Christian, Buddhist, and so forth. 
So you may be wondering why uh, a mission school, all right? Uh, really, uh, for us as a mission school, uh, because my previous school was actually a, a typical government school. I was a principal of a typical government school previously. Uh, currently, uh, I'm the principal of Assumption English. So what's the difference, actually? All right, to me, actually, uh, being in a mission school, character and values education comes a little bit uh, very naturally comes very naturally because of the the platform of religion now we do not uh, evangelize and so forth uh, but there's this common space there's this common space for us to really uh, show gratitude to thank our own faith uh, our own god for good for the good things that come our way and therefore the character and edu and character and values education part of it comes very naturally and then the common space for us to really honor and respect other faith also come very naturally and really for us it's, it's really about teaching ourselves our students uh, to always do good all right uh, in terms of our good deeds and words and also to really think about others uh, rather than about self I think this is so important and when we focus on others a little bit more uh, actually our problems become less uh, and it's good for our well-being as well uh, the next question you could be asking is uh, is assumption english only meant for catholic students uh, definitely no uh, uh, it is a school for all uh, we are a school that is very inclusive in fact uh, if you talk about catholic students and staff uh, Catholic students, we have 25%. The rest of it is made up of other faith. All right? And uh, if you look at uh, uh, our teaching staff itself, we look at this morning, those of us who are involved in this live streaming, actually, I'm the only one that's a Catholic. All right? The rest of my teachers and staff, they're actually all non-Catholics. Just to assure everyone. In fact, I have parents who, who are from uh, maybe from the Hindu faith or the Muslim faith. Uh, some of them, they send their children to our school and they are so happy with the school and the subsequent children also end up in our school as well and they say it proudly actually okay next slide i will just talk a little bit more about the school identity okay where we are situated uh, is we call it the boys town community all right it's a very large community so the ground is very large as well now where we are assumption english school we are nearer to upper bukit timah road all right, we are nearer to Abu Bukit Timah Road, very close to Cashew MRT as well. It is less than five minutes walk, all right, from Cashew MRT. So we were founded in 1953 and we function as a typical secondary school. And therefore, we offer the O levels as well as the N levels curriculum. All right. Now, sometimes people get confused with, uh, with us eh, with Assumption Pathway. Now, Assumption Parkway is a different educational institution, but we share a common history because of Boys Town. Now, their curriculum is focused on vocational skills, a very more hands-on, applied kind of a learning. So for Assumption Parkway, it is meant for students after PSLE who are found not, uh, not suitable for a secondary school curriculum. They are more suited to a vocational, hands-on curriculum, and therefore they move to assumption pathway school now they were founded in 1938 now of course part of the community we have boys town boarding home it is meant for boys who come from challenging home, bank, uh, home background and largely they are orphans as well of course in the past when singapore was uh, growing and developing especially post world war ii uh, there were more boys all right but of course right now with the current situation things are much better number of residents are actually much reduced but they still play a very important role to support boys who come from challenging home backgrounds. All right. So for us in Assumption English, we still receive about three to five uh, students from Boys Town each year. And they are very well managed, well behaved as well. And they add to the diversity in our school. The okay, next slide. So what indeed is a government-aided school, or we call it a mission school? So like what I said earlier on, uh, uh, in the past, uh, it is founded by uh, a certain institution. So in our case, it was founded by the Montford Brothers of St. Gabriel's. All right. So uh, we are a mission school. All right. And uh, there are some other mission schools we are 
undergirded maybe uh, by other Christian faith, Methodist, all right, or maybe the Buddhist faith as well. So we are all government aided mission school. Okay, so for us, uh, actually, uh, we are affiliated to a cluster of schools, uh, which I will share later on. Okay, next slide. So uh, we are affiliated to Catholic Junior College. All right. So for parents and students who are looking at uh, taking your A levels in a junior college, uh, this might interest you. All right. So Catholic Junior College is affiliated to us. So at the end of four years, you know, uh, if you're taking the O levels and you if you qualify for junior college, you will receive two bonus points. If you choose CJC, that's the first choice junior college. So this is one affiliation. Next. These are the list of schools that are affiliated to us. All right. So besides Catholic Junior College, the other Singaporean schools that are affiliated to us is St. Gabriel's uh, Primary, St. Gabriel's Secondary, Monfort Junior, Monfort Secondary, and of course, Assumption Pathway Schools. So these are the network of schools that are affiliated to us. And uh, looking ahead, there will be a lot of collaboration all right, among the six schools. All right. In fact, this year, we also had a talent contest as well among the secondary schools. Uh, and also, we did some uh, sharing of lessons as well among the secondary schools. And of course, uh, we actually had a virtual escape game uh, for the other secondary schools also where we the students get a chance to apply their knowledge of english mathematics as well as science and this was uh, collaborated among the uh, local schools uh, one network of school that is overseas based uh, is the assumption colleges uh, uh, in bangkok chiang mai and lampang so these are schools that we work closely pre-covid they will visit us and sometimes we will visit them as well so there are strong links uh, in fact i think the assumption college in chiang mai is quite well known apparently a lot of the politicians come from there whether they are from the government side or from the opposition side okay just to let you know next slide So we are committed to developing men and women of character and learning. So like what I said uh, earlier on, uh, really uh, character education, values education, it comes very naturally to us, very natural. In part, it's because of our founding saint, St. Louis Marie de Montfort, who plays a very strong, important role uh, for us. And we teach our students the stories of Montfort, uh, which I will not touch on here. All right. But... Uh, Really, uh, it is uh, in our DNA uh, to teach good character, good values. But of course, uh, the academic part is very important as well. And uh, later on, I will let you know uh, what are some of our national exam results and then the, the pathway all right, that our students uh, are eligible for when they leave us. Okay, so our student outcomes. Okay, next slide. Okay, these are our student outcomes and we define it as fortitude, mastery and charity. So these are important attributes that we want to see in our students. Uh, if you look at this picture itself, three of our students, I still remember pre-COVID, three of them were involved in our school debating team. All right. So uh, I still remember when they went for competition, All right, they were against another school. And uh, when it was the turn of another speaker from another school, uh, their turn to speak up, uh, this, this student actually had stage fright and couldn't speak. And what happened was our student actually uh, nodded their head, smiled at this uh, student to encourage him, to encourage him. So how I know about this uh, was because uh, a teacher from the other school actually emailed me to tell me about our students' uh, behavior now, although they were competitors when they see that a student was having challenges and difficulty they, they really show a heart of charity to encourage them and so forth so the teacher was so touched and emailed me to tell me about our students and how proud 
uh, they are about their, their behavior actually. So anyway, fortitude, next slide. We want our students to have that sense of fortitude, means to have that sense of courage and determination uh, in the midst of great challenges and difficulties. I'm not too sure whether uh, you're aware about this uh, person. His name is Sean Tan. He's actually our alumni member. All right. Now, Sean has this big dream uh, about becoming a professional wrestler. Now, of course, you know, this, this journey towards becoming a professional wrestler uh, was very difficult. In fact, a lot of people laugh at him and say, that, ah, how can you be one? But indeed, this year, I think in uh, July, there were news about him becoming the first Singaporean all right, to be featured in the World Wrestling Entertainment. All right, and I think he's had his first fight, I think in September itself. Uh, there are many journey, there are many pathways towards success. Lah. So we are very proud of him. And definitely, he showed this sense of gratitude. Yeah, and we want to see that in our students. Next. Next slide. All right, the next slide uh, actually shows our, our students who did very well in the end level uh, exams uh, last year. So definitely to show that sense of mastery. We want to see our students uh, having that humility, all right, to always want to improve themselves, all right, so that they show mastery in whatever they do, whether it is in their studies, in their CCAs, and so forth. All right, so this is a picture of our, uh, of our students. And definitely, next slide. That sense of mastery can be seen in our students. All right, if you can see uh, the percentage uh, of uh, pathways of students right, moving on to the various post-secondary institutions. So for our four express students, for our four express students, 40.6% of them are eligible for junior college and almost 86% eligible for the polytechnic. Now, if you look at our four express students, especially those who are doing the pure sciences, all right, the pure physics, pure chemistry, pure biology, all right, the percentage eligible for junior college is actually much higher. It is above 50%. And, and those who uh, want to choose uh, the polytechnic is almost 100%. Now, how about our 5N students? All right, these are our four N students who come back for five normal academic to do the O levels. 84% of them are eligible for polytechnic. All right, and these are the main pathway for our five N students. For our four normal academic students, almost 71% eligible for SEC 5. And for our SEC 4 normal technical students, 100% of them are eligible for ITE. So these are a good set of results. So in other words, our students have good uh, options available to them. In fact, right now, uh, what we are trying to do is also to support our students uh, to build up their portfolios, to build up their portfolios so they at the, when they reach SEC 4, all right, they are ready uh, to apply for DSA or early admission exercise as well for post-secondary institution. Now, why we do that? Because we feel that it is important for our students to be pursuing a course of study that they are interested in. All right, they must be interested in what they are studying. All right, especially for post-secondary uh, institution. Now, the next slide. Really, it's about charity. All right, we want to teach our students uh, this heart of charity. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that for all our students who go through us, right, uh, they always have this love and compassion. Now, these are some of our uh, examples of our alumni, uh, one of which is Benedict, uh, Benedict Lim. In fact, he was featured this year. All right. So uh, why was he featured? Because uh, he's uh, still uh, repairing all right, computers, uh, refreshing computers, so that this uh, computers that has been refreshed and repaired can be given to lower income groups uh, in the community. And this is so important, especially right now with the COVID situation, where many families are uh, facing challenging moments and getting devices, computers, it's not easy for them. So this is uh, something that Benedict has done, all right, to support the community. Next slide. Another one of our alumni as well, Aliyah. 
All right, she volunteered in the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Singapore, a charity organization, all right, to help uh, create resources, all right, teaching resources uh, through videos and so forth uh, to help the teachers over there and also to help capture moments uh, in their events as well, celebratory events as well. So we are all very proud of them, okay? So basically, we want our students to show that sense of fortitude, mastery, and charity all right next slide so like what i said uh, earlier on our founding saint is saint louis marie de Pontford. all right a very important saint for us and because we are mission school uh, he he plays a role like a superhero for us so he said those whom the world rejects must move you the most so that's something i remind my teachers and staff and that's something we teach our students as well because we want to be very we want to be inclusive we want to be there to always to be serving the last the lost and the least all right so a person with a self a sense of others before self very important for us all right so i think after this uh we're gonna have a bit of a video right right next slide All right. Thank you, Mr. Kwok. Okay, to the audience who have just joined us, if you have any questions for us along the way, all right, you may click on the question form link listed on the YouTube description, or you can also scan on the QR code you see on the screen to assess the form on your mobile devices. All right, many of you will have asked similar questions on uh, CCAs we offer in AES. All right, so actually we thought we wanted to share a little bit more of about our CCAs. Okay, so these are the CCAs on offer that you can see on our screen. Okay, I personally take charge of the football team. Okay, so football is one of the DSA sports together with uh, judo and basketball. And then we, we also had questions about selection trials. So are there selection trials for CCAs? So generally, as part of orientation program, all right, the SEC ones, you will be able to experience the various CCAs. So all the CCAs, they will get to try it out. And for sports and games in particular, all right, the CCAs will likely invite the students to go through simple routines to assess their suitability for the sport. Okay, but if let's say the student is not able to get into a particular CCA, or uh, if he or she does not have the relevant experience, maybe not. All right. As long as we, the child has an interest, we will take their choices into consideration very seriously. All right. In fact, for football, I think we had an announcement just last week that we will be one of the pilot schools, one of the 10 schools to be part of the Singapore Football Academy. All right. The next set of questions we ask are related to um, NDLP, so the National Dig Digital Literacy Program. Okay. In line with the ministry's direction, Okay, AES has embarked on this journey and every Assumption Knight owns a learning device. All right, so actually when the secondary ones come in next year, they will be expected to get a device as well. And the next slide will show you the Chromebook model that our students use. Okay, so this model was chosen based on the portability, usability and durability. Can we show the slide for the Chromebook? Uh, yes, okay, so uh, if you can see on the screen, we have the Lenovo 500e. So this is a Chromebook that the students will be getting uh, if they join the Assumption English School. All right, so for Singaporeans, uh, the payment will be by EduSafe. All right, so for uh, PRs and international students, then you will have to pay by cash. All right, so these details will sort it out later if you are posted to the school. Okay, and now before I invite our panelists onto the screen for the live segment discussion, okay, please keep your questions coming in. Simply click, click on the question form link under the YouTube description or scan the QR code, okay, when you, uh, that you see on the screen to assess the form. All right, now we would like to move into our live Q&A segment. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, now with us, okay, we have a 
yeah, we have a uh, quite a few few people on the screen. Okay, so we have a uh, Miss uh, Dania. Would you like to just wave, Miss Dania? All right, and then we also have a uh, Miss Rain. Okay, and this uh, on the bottom right corner is Arena, right? Ah, yes. Okay. No, it's Francine. All right, so it's Francine. Okay. Okay, yes. So maybe I'll just introduce a little bit. Okay, so Dania is our alumni. Okay, so maybe the first question is to Dania. Uh, which year do you graduate in and what are you doing now? Hi, everyone. I'm Dania. Um, I graduated in 2011. So from 10 years ago. <laughs> So right now I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually finishing up my uh degree in psychology. So I'm in my final semester. Um when I'm not studying, I'm actually teaching creative writing to primary school and secondary school students. Uh so that's a lot of fun. I actually a lot of fun doing English in AES before. And I do get involved in some volunteering here and there. So yeah, that's what I'm doing ten years later. Uh, maybe Miss Dania, can you just share a little bit about your most memorable experience as a you know, student leader back in AES? Mm. Yeah, so um, when I was in AES, I was actually part of the student council. Um, so I was in the ex school as one of the vice presidents. Um, at AES, we had a lot of opportunities to cultivate our leadership skills. Um, we went for a lot of camps, workshops. So I think one memorable event for me was definitely one of the student leadership camps when I was in Sec 3. We actually went overseas to Bintan. Um, so that was really exciting. We had all the leaders from all the different segments, like from different CCAs, um, other leadership groups. We all came together. We went to Bintan. We really learned a lot about each other, about what kind of uh, skills we could cultivate. Um, so yeah, it was actually a really good opportunity to grow ourselves and to develop some bonds with the people in other groups that we don't usually interact with. So that was definitely very memorable with me. So we had a lot of trekking and kayaking also as a fun part. Hey, thanks, Dania. Oh, this made me uh, miss all my uh, outdoor experiences <laughs> that I have with all the students yeah, as well yeah. before the COVID situation. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I will ask another question, maybe this time directed to Francine. Okay, so Francine is a secondary one student this year. All right, so and Francine, maybe you want to just share one memorable moment you have as a sec one? Um, my most memorable moments here in AES was during SEC1 orientation where everyone was new to each other. And since everyone was new, we all had to introduce ourselves and our, like and our likings, which was good because most of us had the same interest, which was easier, easier for us to interact and feel comfortable with one another. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope everyone can hear me clearly with the mask on. Um, so actually, Dania and Francine, I understand that both of you are actually student leaders. Dania, um, 10 years ago, yes, even though I don't look that age, but I remember she was also a very active student leader back then. So maybe to both ladies, um, uh, maybe Dania first, you know, you can share a bit more about your student leadership journey and then Francine can make a comparison. Has it been the same for you? Do you do you hear any parallels from your senior later on? All right, uh, Dania? Uh, okay, so, uh, wow, 10 years, let me trace back a bit. So we started our student leadership journey in SEC2. So SEC2 was actually around the time where we, uh, we joined the student council. We get, uh, we start getting involved in events like Teacher's Day, Founder's Day, um, some camps here and there. Um, after the end of the year, then they start choosing people for key roles. For example, secretary, president, vice president. Um, I think the way we did it then was mostly by interview. So you choose what position you want. Um, from there, we see based on our performance during the past year, what we can be allocated in. So at that point of time, my student council teacher was Ms. Charlene Chai. Um, so all of us were placed in different positions under her leadership as well. 
So I was uh, allocated to vice president for SEC 3 and half of SEC 4. So during that time, we took on a lot of key events uh, again, but this time we do more of the planning part rather than just executing. So that is actually when uh, we really learn a lot uh, behind the scenes. So we're not just doing things, we're actually thinking three steps ahead, uh, trying to figure out what uh, we should do for parents, for students, for teachers as well. And yeah, so that was the student leadership journey. So it wasn't just doing, we also did a lot of learning. So we had a lot of camps to help us as well. All right, thank you, Danya, for sharing. Right, before uh, Francine, you share, actually, uh, our other SEC2 student counsellor has come back online. She was disconnected earlier. So I shall take my leave off the screen and uh, I will actually bring Irina in. Irina? Uh, hello. Okay, hi Irina. Okay, maybe we just let Francine finish it off. Huh? So Francine, maybe you want to just quickly uh, just share a little bit about your student leadership experience because although you're just a sec one, uh, yeah, what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward into helping on the planning of different programs and events because I feel like um, it's quite fun to do it, seeing the, st the other students enjoy their time for, from the games. And um, it just makes me happy because it feels like um, the hard work was done. Okay, thank you, Francine. Okay, maybe one question for Irina, because I saw this on the screen. Uh, was AES your first choice school? Um, yes, um, my, mainly because my dad kept and kept encouraging me to to go to the school because it looked very modern, and I was especially interested to this into the school CCA um, judo. Since uh, it's not a CCA normally offered to most secondary schools, and yes, I'm a judoka of AES, and I'm proud to be here. Uh, I'm also a student leader, uh, part of the student council of AES, and I find my time in uh, the student council fun because we get to plan um, events such as the Teachers' Day event uh, with each other, um, uh, discussing ideas on how it would go smoothly. Since now it's the pandemic and we couldn't do it as we used to before pan the pandemic uh, happened. So we had to think of uh, innovative ways for it to be fun for the teachers and students. Nice, Irina. So two years into AES, so how do you feel now? Um, I feel. I feel that my time in school is like is like one of the best times because I always get to hang out with my friends and um, and I can't really do much at home. Because I'm always at home, I don't really go out. Um, the teachers here are very, all very nice. Uh, I'd like to shout out to Miss Kati, who's no longer in our school, but she's been my form teacher for the past two years, and she's uh, been a really good influence to me. And I thank her for all that she's done for our class. Hey, thank you, Irina. Yeah, Miss Kati is a very good friend of mine. Okay, uh, thank you to all the Assumption Knights who have joined us today. Okay, so in AES, we call our students Assumption Knights. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right. Okay, we would like to move on to the next segment. Okay, we will have invited some of our parent volunteers from the parent support group to join us today. Okay, before, uh, yeah, just and before we move on, all right, so just in case uh, you have questions, remember to just click on the link, all right, and scan on the uh, QR code to ask any questions, okay? We'll just keep the questions coming, okay? We will throw it to the panelists there uh, on our screen. Can we have our next set of uh, panelists to come in? 
Okay, hello everyone. Okay, Hi. so I think over here, yeah, at the top, uh, top left, I think we have Miss Melissa Go. At the, the top right, we have Miss Aruna. Okay, uh, ladies, would you like to just uh share about your experiences in AES if they, uh, for your kids so far? Okay, I'd like uh, to go first. Melissa, can I okay, go first? Okay, sure, Miss Aruna. Sure. Yeah, Aruna, okay. you can go first. Go ahead. Hi, uh, my name is Aruna and I am a mom of five boys. Okay, my eldest son graduated last year. My second son is in AES this year. He's in secondary one. And my third son will be joining AES in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my experience with Assumption English has been great so far. Uh, my son who is currently in AES really enjoys going to school. And there has never been any complaints from him. Even if he is sick, he still wants to go to school. I feel like AES is his second home. He always uh, compliments his teachers. He compliments his principal for being uh, caring and humble. He has made a lot of friends. He enjoys uh, basketball as his CCA. And very importantly, academically, he has improved a lot, a lot. Okay, he. And he always says, Mama, I'm, I am a proud Assumptionite. And that makes me very happy. Thank you. <laughs> so hey, I continue. You want to share? Yeah, oh, you want to share experiences? Okay, uh, okay Melissa here. Uh, I only have one son. Uh, so far, uh, my son has enjoyed uh, enjoy schooling in AES. Um, uh, throughout this year, actually, he set one in uh, 20121. So uh, I find that he has become more self-motivated uh, to complete his task. So actually, uh, there's an incident where I would like to mention, like um, Chinese is his uh, least preferred subject. So um, and actually what happened was like uh, what, uh, during the uh, final year exam, right? I noticed that actually he uh, locks himself in the room and he started writing and then um, started to uh, write those Chinese words practice by himself. And then he asked me, hey, can you give me spelling? So that has never happened before for this uh, subject. And um, he told me that uh, actually the teacher encourages them, uh, him to um, uh, has good good uh, studying habits so i felt that aes uh, teachers not only teach well but is able to uh, inspire them he often has very positive feedbacks uh, about the school teachers uh, he's currently in judo team and uh, he has grown to love the sport and uh, i noticed that uh, you know throughout the uh, covid pandemic he had the school has never stopped uh, teaching them uh, they have online zoom uh, at home like once a week and once uh, face to face uh, uh, is, is able to carry out in uh, CCA, they actually call them back twice a week uh, during this uh, December holidays. So to let them practice judo. So um, as this is a mission school, uh, I agree that, you know, uh, the uh, character building is really um, stressed upon and um they ha often have many charities events and programs um so i also felt that the school is very very concerned about the uh, well-being of the students they did survey and um to ensure that you know uh, all the kids are mentally well during this COVID period that's all for me thank you miss melissa yeah maybe i'll ask some question to uh, miss aruna uh, yeah, maybe uh, we want to share one thing that differentiates AES from other schools. Uh, one thing would be that AES is uh, a mixed of all races. The school mixed of all races, and uh, and I I know that because especially my son who is Indian, he has a lot of friends from different other cultures. Okay, and he is always so happy. He's happy to learn their their language. So he comes home and he starts talking to me in the, in the, in the language that he has learned in school from his friends, okay? I mean, yeah, that's it <laughs> from me. Uh, yes, I actually, I taught the first son before. Uh, when he was in secondary two, I taught him in secondary three as well. I taught him science. And then actually he was featured just now in Mr. Quark's slides as one of the top scorers for the N-level examinations. So that's, wow. so that's for Miss Aruna's son. Yeah. <laughs> 
there are a few more questions raised about the school program. So I'm going to now invite our principal, Mr. Kwok, and our vice principal, Ms. Wong, onto the screen, all right, to join us for this segment. All right, can we have a... Thank, okay, so be, before that, I'd like to thank our parents as well for joining us today. All right, so thank you, Miss Melissa and Miss Aruna. Okay, so maybe can we have on our screen um, our principal and vice principal? Okay, uh, while well, we are getting them onto the screen, so in the meanwhile, if you have any questions for our school leaders, all right, for our P and VP, please just feel free to free to ask, okay, inside the Google form that you will be seeing. Okay, I think yeah. uh, right now, yes, we see on our screen, uh, Mr. Kwok, who address us just now, Ms. Wong, you want to just say hi? Hey, hi, good morning, parents. Okay, so maybe we have a first question. All right, so I think the students are, uh, the parents are curious about subject-based bending. So uh, is there subject-based bending in 2022 and how are the class composition like? Mm. Uh, uh, Ms. Wong, Ms. Wong okay. you want to take the right. question? Okay, uh, take this. Well, um, AES is one of the pilot schools that started on full SBB. Right. The difference is um, for other schools on SBB, that means they only offer four subjects, namely English, mother tongue, maths and science. To be on board for full SBB, these subjects are now being extended to humanities in the second year. Okay. So how this work about is based on the PSLE entry points. If your child is in NA and attaining AL, uh, five and above, all right, or better, then your child will be offered an express stream subject for that um, component, all right. And if let's say your child is in NT and attaining an AL6 in a particular subject, then in AES, we would offer you um, the subject at NA level. And is an option being offered and it's for the child and parents to decide to take up the offer. So that is the first entry point. Then somewhere in the middle of the year, that is mid-year, based on your performance, academic performance, if your child shows the potential to be able to take the higher demand subjects, then the school will again offer the new group of students to come on board. And there's a third entry, which is end of SEC 1, based on the overall performance the school will take will make another offer to another group of students who are eligible. Now, ultimately, the message to all parents and students is that based on your effort in AES, you are never short of opportunity. Now, then being the full SBB, meaning that we are extending and offering subjects to uh, humanities, which is uh, which are the literature, geography, and history. So, at the end of set one based on the performance, the child may be offered to take SVB Humanities when they are in SEC 2. So ultimately, it's based on the student's uh, academic performance and also the ability to cope with the spread of subjects because parents need to be mindful. The number of subjects that the child will be taking in secondary schools will be much more than primary school. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Wong. Maybe I just want to add on uh, for parents. Uh, yeah, just now Ms. Wong mentioned about the full subject-based spending uh, process, uh, the structure, uh, which is done by Ministry of Education. And indeed, uh, students after the PSLE results, you need to score achievement level of five and better uh, for normal academic stream and achievement level of six and better or a foundation subject uh, score of A, A grade, uh, uh, to do NA level if you are in the NT stream. So what happens is you need to have all these uh, scores and better in order to qualify for full subject-based spending. However, in Assumption English, uh, we do have a, 
uh, alternative program all right for students who do not qualify for full SPB whether it is in the NA or the NT stream because as mentioned earlier on you need to qualify based on your results so in Assumption English we have this special program which is only unique to our school we call it the self-development program for short uh, SDP all right uh, not the opposition party yeah uh, but our own uh, special program uh, all right SDP what it means is that let's say we have an NA student who's interested in doing uh science all right at the express level but somehow he didn't get the score uh to be eligible for it so what happened is that in assumption english we have resources all right that is parked online all right and then the school will ask these students are you interested in trying out uh, express level all right science and then if the child say yes i'm interested uh, they are able to uh, get the resources online all right uh, do their own independent studies online all right and there are quizzes and tests uh, short quizzes and tests online as well for the school to monitor all right so that for these students who are interested in this uh, they are able to uh, learn more and stretch their ability uh, a bit more as well but all this is by choice. The school do not force. It's up to the child, up to the parent. So this applies to NA students as well as to NT students as well. So far this year, we've been able to uh, uh, provide uh, science and humanities all right, for the SDP. But for next year, we are able to extend it to English and mathematics as well. All right. So in total, English, mathematics, science, all right, and the humanities. Uh. Now, some parents may be asking, is there any special program for the express students? All right, yes, we do have. Uh, we put it under SDP as well. So for next year, SEC2 express students, all right, the same kind of a structure, same kind of a process, SEC2 express students will have a chance to try out, all right, upper secondary science. So mainly biology, physics chemistry at the upper secondary level they get a bit of a taste of what upper secondary science is all about and they also get a chance to get a taste of additional mathematics as well at the upper secondary level all right for sec 2 express students so same thing it's up to them to uh, choose whether they want to embark on this uh, program or not now why we do this for the sec 2 express students is because at the end of sec 2 they need to make a choice of upper sec upper secondary subjects so many a times they're not too sure so by embarking on this they can make better choices better informed choices as well all right so this is unique only to assumption english school i think right at this point i think we are the only school that is able to offer uh, to offer this uh, program to our students yeah thank you hey, thank you mr kuo uh, we also have uh, parents who are concerned a little bit about uh, bullying. So maybe this question will be to Mr. Kwok. So how does the school handle bullying cases or bullying among the peers? So uh, I just want to say this. Uh, the general tone of discipline in Assumption English uh, is very good. It's very good. Uh, in the sense that because uh, we are a mission school, so the spiritual part of of uh, aspect uh, of everyone's life in, in Assumption English uh, is very important. So in fact, we start off the day uh, with a prayer. Mm -hmm. And the prayer brings us that sense of peace uh, and calmness uh, uh, to the whole school. Of course, the prayers are in the Catholic uh, prayer. But at the same time, I always uh, remind my students and staff as well, while we are praying, it is also a chance for you uh, to give honor and gratitude uh, to your own faith as well because we must be inclusive we must respect all faith and I always encourage them to say thanks to your own god to your own faith as well so that is the start of the day and it creates that sense of calmness and peace uh, uh, to everyone and uh, i always remind everyone as well whatever you do all right do it because you want to give honor to your own faith as well and that's part of the morning prayer and i must say that 
the general tone of the school is generally very good. Generally very good. Uh, in fact, when I first joined the school in 2018, I was thoroughly surprised. I was thoroughly surprised by the conduct and behavior of the school. Of course, we do have our discipline process, all right, and, and, and it is differentiated uh, from mild offenses to a little bit more serious offenses. And there are consequences that students have to face as well. All right. And if you talk about, let's say, bullying, and we define bullying as very serious. We take it very seriously. And definitely as a school, we will try to investigate to find out what is the context of the situation and who is the perpetrator. All right. And why did this happen? And the consequences will be met. But beyond the consequence, uh, it is also helping our students uh, to learn about good values and good character and importantly about empathy as well the importance of empathy so that whoever have done wrong uh, made the wrong decision they will be able to internalize that hey they can do better than this they cannot continue with this behavior in fact earlier on i mentioned about our founding saint saint louis marie de montfort and one of the stories of montfort which we teach all our students uh, is Montfort in rain, this place in France. And this story is about uh, Montfort when he was young, all right, and he witnessed how one of his classmates was being bullied by a group of students and how he stand up all right, for this student who was bullied. So these are things that we teach our students all right, in the story form as well, all right, so that it becomes more meaningful to them and easier to remember as well. So for them, they should not be bullying people. And if you see anyone being bullied, you must be able to stand up all right, and support all right, the child, the student, the classmate who is being bullied also. But nevertheless, we take it seriously and every case is important to us and we will get to the bottom of it to solve it, all right, to support the student, all right, whether you are the victim and if you are the perpetrator to help the person uh, learn about good behavior and this should not be uh, continued. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Kuo. Okay, so we have questions now with regards to mother tongue language. So maybe I'll direct the questions to Miss Wong. So Miss Wong, the first question for mother tongue language. Uh, any higher mother tongue being offered at SEC1 level? What's the criteria? Oh, all right. Um, for higher mother tongue, yes, in AES, we do offer higher Chinese. As for higher... Uh, Malay, generally, we don't have that many students. And uh, for higher Tamil, uh, just to let parents know, uh, our students taking the Tamil, they have to actually uh, join uh, take Y secondary for Tamil language. That means after school. Okay, the schedule will be shared with our students involved. Um, back to this question on higher mother tongue. Uh, the requirement for primary, primary six students coming into secondary schools um, there are different uh, condition or criteria. Number one is you have the higher Chinese background and you have actually attained distinction or merit in primary school. And on top of it, you have actually attained the PSLE score of 9 to 14. Okay, so that's one. Now, secondly, uh, what about I don't have a background of higher mother tongue in primary school, but I scored a PSLE uh, of the range 9 to 14. Then in this case, for your mother tongue language, you are hitting AL1 or 2, you will also be offered higher Chinese. Then how about students who achieve, uh, didn't really achieve very well for higher, uh, for mother tongue in primary school, all right, not even AL1 or AL2, but I have the aptitude and I'm very keen to learn the Chinese at a higher level. Then in this case, uh, the child need to attain a PSLE score of 8. Okay, that means for, for all your four subjects, you are able to attain a score of 8. Then in this case, um, you know, we find that maybe the child has the ability to um, take up higher Chinese. But not to be so discouraged, if you, do the, you, you, you are unable to hit the requirement as stated here, um, throughout the year in the learning of Chinese language, our teachers do look out for potential late bloomers 
because sometimes our students acquire the language through interest and then based on further motivation. So our teachers do look out for students like this and we do have students being offered higher Chinese in SEC2 and so on. Okay, I hope I've answered that question. Yes, thank you, Ms. Wong. Okay, just to add for the Tamil language students, actually they will attend lessons at TIGY just once a week. So I think last year the arrangement was either on Monday or Thursday, depending on the schedule. Uh, they will be required to register at TIGY Secondary on either the first or second day of school when school opens. Okay, so maybe another question for Ms. Wong uh, for the 2022 intake. So uh, how many classes are we looking at? What's the ratio between Express, NA and NT? Okay, as of now, we have projected for 2022 to have roughly three to four Express classes, two NA classes, and one NT class. All right. Okay, we hope we can have so many students coming in. Right? Let's be looking forward to that. Okay, one set of questions to Mr. Kwok. Okay, uh, since you are the only Catholic on the screen. Uh, are there Catechism <laughs> classes? So maybe what's the Catholic? Catholic programs like? Uh, yeah, uh, we do have this uh, program called the uh, Faith Alive program. It's conducted uh, on Fridays right, for all Catholic students. Uh, it's not a catechism class. Uh. Uh, cate catechism class, normally uh, the, the church will conduct it. So in, in Assumption English, we have a Faith Alive program for all Catholic students on Friday. So at the end of, uh, Friday is a short day. They finish about 12.30, 12.40, and then they will continue for one more hour of this Faith Alive program uh, where they strengthen their spiritual journey. Uh, um, it's all aspect of uh, uh, the Catholic faith, but with a slight emphasis of on the life of our founding saint, uh, Monfort. Now we do also have uh, Catholic CCA as well. We call it the Young Monfortian Associates. Uh, so this particular CCA is compulsory for uh, Sec 1 Catholic students. All right. So the first year is, is compulsory. Uh, from Sec 2 onwards, uh, it is no longer compulsory unless you have been selected for leadership position All right, to serve in the Catholic CCA, then you will continue. And then for Sec 3 Catholic students, they get a chance, pre-COVID, uh, they get a chance to travel to Malacca to our affiliated uh, organization called the Monfort Center over that side. Uh. Uh, but looking ahead, uh, I don't think uh, schools will be traveling in 2022. All right. So I think such a, a learning journey overseas will not be conducted. I saw one of the questions also about affiliation. I think just now in one of my slides, I mentioned about uh, some of the local schools that are being affiliated to us. Eh? And in particular, we are talking about Monfort Junior, a primary school, and a St. Gabriel's primary, uh, uh, a primary school as well. And when I mentioned affiliation, when I mean uh, affiliation, in the sense that we belong to the Monfort Brothers of St. Gabriel's School. So that is the affiliation. Now, does these two primary schools enjoy uh, affiliation kind of uh, preference uh, when, uh, when they come to Assumption English? No, there is no affiliated preferences all right, for this primary school uh, uh, students when they apply to a kind of a bonus or that kind of a thing or cut off. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, thank you, Mr. Kwok. Okay, so I think it's already 12 p.m. So we would like to end the live Q&A segment. All right, so to everyone who is still with us on YouTube Live, thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, and we will appreciate if you can give us feedback based on today's session. Okay, so maybe we can just show the feedback form on the screen. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, so okay. So right now, what you see on the screen is also the parent support group uh, social media accounts to follow. Should you wish to uh, connect with them to find out more about the school, uh, this is one avenue. So aes.pv.sg at gmail dot com. Uh, we will also link you up with the parent support group should your child be enrolled in Sec One. Okay. So we will be providing opportunities during the parent seminar for the parent support group to connect with you as well okay and we will 
also be playing a video showcasing our sec ones this year's sec ones we will try to convince you why you should join aes next year okay so uh the, the on the last slides on the screen so that you can also follow us on aes mana okay so, and there's a feedback qr code right at the middle so for us for you to provide us feedback for today thank you very much okay goodbye Yes, my first choice because it's very convenient. It's MRT and bus stop nearby. There's a bus stop, and then if you cross the road, there's train station. Just one train stop. You don't need to sit down. There will be the Goddess Hand Mall. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I chose areas as my first choice as you have a lot of economy and looking at the most relaxing. The school compound is super green, you know, when you first enter the school, you see green vines hanging down from the staircase and a grand fountain and an obby. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just the best ever. Hey, yes, yo, I am very comfortable and happy with everyone around me, not only because of the school environment and the teachers, but also because of our fellow Assumption Knights and student counsellors who have always put their best foot forward in you know, making everyone comfortable and happy. Joining AES is like really enlightening and it's also a very welcoming community. Like All the teachers are friendly, seniors will be there and they will be able to help you. So yeah. The teachers are very nice, they are very caring. And yeah, we need to help you if you have questions, and then they will like push you away and say no. Uh, yes, AS my, was my first choice. And all my relatives who are alumni have given me very good feedback about AS. My family members were alumni, and they have told me that the teachers here were very kind and helpful, and they will always be there for you. AES! The school primary gave me a very warm and welcoming feeling. And I went to one of the school's open house. I enjoy going to school in the morning. It's because the principal, all the first principal, will wish us a good morning every day when we came to school. Hey, yes! AES has an affiliation to a junior college. And affiliation means that we can get to the junior college, in this case it's CJC, easier because we get bonus points. Which is going to be good because it has more opportunities for us in the future. Yes! It is a place where everyone's opinion is valuable and everyone is treated equally no matter what course you are taking. The teachers won't, also, won't hesitate to give you supplementary lessons if you requested any for certain subjects that you are not stronger in. This school is a place of joy where you can express how you feel about the school and how you feel about your management of work to the dedicated teachers and the counsellors who are willing to lend a year and help us. Hey, yes! <laughs>